Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Tony Clespis. I hope you enjoyed the little short film I put together last uh, Wednesday. It was really fun to make. And now I'm here back to make another video and I'm in my kitchen today because I wanted to make some kind of dessert thing. Now the recipe I'm making today is basically kind of homemade Reese's chocolate peanut butter cups. That's what we're doing today. And it's really simple. If anybody wants to create it, there's no baking involved. You just are refrigerating it all. And it's just a super simple recipe. There's only a handful of ingredients. And I just wanted to film myself making it today because I was making them anyway. So I figured why not film it? Now I will say these will make great little Valentine's Day treats. And unfortunately, I'm uploading this video after Valentine's Day. I'm sorry. But you know what? Do you really need Valentine's Day or a holiday to make something kind of yummy like homemade rice, not Rice Krispie treats, homemade Reese's peanut butter cups? I mean, just take the recipe and go with it. Like with my last like baking cooking video, I'll have, I'll make sure that the recipe is down below in the description box, as well as all the ingredients you'll need, which speaking of the ingredients you will need are two cups of crushed graham crackers, two cups of powdered sugar, two sticks of butter, one and a quarter cup of peanut butter, and one large package of chocolate chips. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is, since I don't actually have two cups of crushed graham crackers, I'm going to take one of these sleeves of graham crackers and I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to take a Ziploc bag here and just take eh, maybe more than half because I don't really know how much is two cups. Oh, what the heck, let's just put the sleeve in. Just take a rolling pin and kind of... You know what they say, getting your aggressions out. And there you have it, a perfect brown bag of graham crackers. Okay, so we've got that and I'm just gonna set those aside for the time being. And the reason I wanted to set those away was because I need to do the peanut butter and the butter first. That's the first part of this recipe, the first real part of this recipe anyway, is that you need to cream together your butter and your peanut butter. Now I'm sure you can do this in a stand mixer if you have it, but I figured I wanted to just do it the old fashioned way and just do it in a good old mixing bowl. So that's what we're going to do today. You want to plop your butter in and you want to probably make sure for the most part that it's room temperature so it's easier to cream. I'm not 100% sure mine is exactly room temperature so we'll see how this goes. Alright now I'm just gonna measure out my peanut butter. Remember you want a cup and a quarter of peanut butter so. Alright so our cup goes in and then our quarter cup. I'm gonna eyeball. Okay, peanut butter is in. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spatula and I'm just gonna whiz all this up. This is what you call creaming your peanut butter and your butter. I am suddenly regretting doing this the old fashioned way. Cause my arm hurts. It's driving me nuts. Get it? Nuts? Cause I'm working with, you get, you get it. Once you have completely regretted your choice to go handmade and hand mixed and gotten your butter and your peanut butter all completely combined, you're gonna add two cups of powdered sugar. I've already added one cup, so I just want to add the second cup of powdered sugar so we can make sure our peanut butter and butter get nice and sweet. All right. So we're just gonna mix that up now. Oh God, what is happening? Something's happening here and I don't quite know what. Again, I'm somewhat regretting my decision to make this without the mixer, because I have one, but I did not want to use it. Once you've basically got peanut butter frosting, because that's essentially what this is, we want to go ahead and wipe our hands off first, because you know, this is getting gross and messy. I'm gonna take the graham crackers now that I beat up at the beginning. And we're gonna take two cups. I have realized an error upon reading the recipe. I need two and a half cups of powdered sugar. So, great. Back in the powdered sugar we go. And in my mistake, I realized I forgot to finish talking. So once you add your graham crackers, obviously mix everything up. Okay, now that I've got my mixture nice and mixed up, what I'm gonna do is I have this little mini muffin pan. And I'm just gonna line it with some liners. I've got my, okay, I've got those done now. 
Then I'm just gonna take a small little ice cream scooper and I'm just gonna take a scoop to get out and then, and then just kind of press it down into the mold like so. And you wanna make sure you leave some room because remember we're putting chocolate on top of these. So leave some room for the chocolate. So I'm just gonna fill these up and then once you finish lining these up, you're gonna stick them in the fridge to cool before you put the chocolate on them. You need to make sure they're nice and firm before you put the chocolate on. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna turn the camera off, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna finish that, and I'll meet you back here. So I've got my peanut butter mixture in a fridge, in the fridge, or if you're even pressed for time, you can put them in the freezer to kind of set and cool before we add chocolate to them. And I will admit, it does make a lot. If you're gonna use a little mini cupcake tin, it makes a lot and it kind of takes a while, so it's a little bit of a labor. But an alternative to that, if you don't have the time for that, is just to put it in some big, flat, wide thing, and press it down, and then you can frit, cool it off that way. Now since this is homemade Reese's peanut butter cups. We need some chocolate. So I've just got some chocolate chips here that are super easy to find in the grocery store and also super yummy. What we're gonna do is just shake some into a microwave safe bowl and that's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna microwave this for about 15 seconds at a time until it gets nice and smooth and luscious and hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm praying to the chocolate gods that it doesn't seize up on me. If that does happen and you'll notice because it's not gonna get very silky and smooth, then just start over and maybe try a different method to let your chocolate, I'm not sure. But yeah, we're just gonna pop this into microwave 15 seconds at a time until we get nice Nice and smooth and velvety chocolate. Alright, so my chocolate is nice and melted. You can see that. Did not seize up on me, thank goodness. So what you're gonna do now is, and this is the last step pretty much, just get a spoon and one of your little prepared peanut butter mixtures and you're just gonna get a spoon and then you're just gonna Spoon the chocolate right on top. Might not look pretty, and that's okay, because, you know, that's what you get when you say you made it homemade. There you go. I'd eat one of these, but, you know, it's not set up, so I don't want to eat one and not be ready. So there you go. It's really simple and easy, and once you get the chocolate on, you just need to stick them back in the fridge and let them cool and get set, and then you're done. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see me do more cooking things like this, go ahead and hit subscribe and you'll never miss a video of mine. And I will see you guys next Wednesday, so bye!